Wednesday, April 8, 1868, the Shackelfords, Gatewoods, and Kirklands, along with a few other families, set out from San Bernardino, California, for Missouri via the Southern Route, following the Butterfield Overland Mail Route. They passed through Southern California, Northern Mexico, Arizona Territory, New Mexico Territory, and Texas, stopping for five weeks in Center Mill, which is in Hood County, before resuming their journey. After passing through Dallas, Atwell Gatewood and his new wife decided to remain in Texas, while the Shackelfords and Kirklands continued on to Missouri. Ruth Shackelford wrote the final entry we have of her 1868 diary on September 7, 1868, while they were still in Texas, north of Sherman, but soon to cross the Red River into Indian Territory. To reach Roscoe, Missouri, where the Shackelfords and Kirkland settled, they traveled through Indian Territory, Arkansas, and southwestern Missouri. I'm Jen Globius, and this is the Halanaki Deep Dive, a podcast about mapping and analysis for historical and archaeological research. In this episode, I'll discuss the Shackelfords' 1868 route from San Bernardino, California to Roscoe, Missouri, and what's next for mapping the Shackelfords' journeys. Let's dive in. So let's start by talking about the 1868 map and what maps I used to actually create the route. So starting with California through Arizona, I used an 1877 map by Mallory and Ward, which included, even though it was over a decade after, almost a decade after the Shackelfords traveled this route, it included the railroads, of course, which were popular at the time, but also regular roads and roads and stage stations. So it had this older information about it. Around Vallecito, California, the Shackelford's party joined the Butterfield Overland Mail Route, which took them briefly into northern Mexico before returning to California around Fort Yuma. And they followed this route through Arizona Territory and... Their, their path followed the Gila River until dipping south to Tucson and then heading east again across Apache Territory and over the Chiricahua Mountains at Apache Pass. So just east of Apache Pass is the, the edge of Arizona. It was the edge of that map. Um, and that map, the 1877 map by Mallory and Ward, came from the uh, David Ramsey map collection. For the route across New Mexico Territory, I found an 1867 map from the Library of Congress, which is where I found all the remaining maps for the 1868 route for their journey. And this map did not show many station names from the Butterfield route, but it did show what seemed to be this, the route the path across southwestern New Mexico to the Rio Grande. So it didn't have many of the stations. It did have forts and other locations that matched up with the route that the Shackelfords took. And since it came from the year before, it seemed like a pretty good map. For the very long stretch of the Shackelfords route across Texas, I used an 1872 map of Texas by Colton. One part where I'm not sure what whether this map is showing the the route accurately, is that this map shows the route, their path crossing Rio Pecos at Horsehead Crossing. But that's probably incorrect, since if you remember back a few episodes to the Rio Pecos Horsehead Crossing episode, the route shifted slightly away from Horsehead Crossing, so it shifted to the south to a different place shortly after the Shackelford Party crossed in late June 1868. And so by 1872, when this map dates to, the the trail shouldn't have gone across Horsehead Crossing. East of the Pecos, the Shackelfords left the Butterfield route to head to Center Mills in Hood County, and since this wasn't a long and established route, and in many parts of Texas, of the map, this map in Texas, like I, there's very high uncertainty about their actual path. Many, there were very few settlements across this area, and what Roof used to mark location were names of streams, not very few of which actually ended up on this 1872 map. So there's high uncertainty about their route in this part of Texas. 
So they headed to Center Mills in Hood County, and Center Mills itself is not depicted on this 1872 map of Texas, but I was able to place it since Long Creek, along which the mill that gave Center Mills its name, is shown, and I know that was in the very northern part of Hood County. So after Center Mills, they go through Dallas, and then they rejoin basically the, the Butterfield route, although not exactly. The path north of Sherman, Texas, beyond what Ruth Shackelford wrote about, is mostly conjecture, um, since I don't have any guidance from her diary since it ended before they left Texas. And so that part of the route has the lowest confidence level, as very unsure. I did partially follow the Butterfield Overland route through Indian Territory since I had followed it before, and that was done using an 1866 map of Indian Territory that had roads, and it included a few of the Butterfield Overland route stations on it, but not all of them. For the route through northwestern Arkansas, I used an 1866 map of Arkansas by Langtree, although beyond Fort Smith and Fayetteville, none of the other stations on the Butterfield route in Arkansas were on this map. And so that's highly, highly unsure, even without, if I was assuming that they were following the Butterfield Overland route, then it would be unsure because the stations aren't aren't marked on this map. And although more of the stations in Missouri are on the 1861 map of Missouri by Lloyd that I used, I I followed roads that would have gotten the Shackleford party to Roscoe in St. Clair County, which is where they settled, rather than to Springfield, Missouri. So diverges. St. Roscoe is more to the west than Springfield. And again, we don't, I have no idea if that's the route they took. And why exactly they headed to Roscoe or to St. Clair County at all? Why, rather than to Springfield or back to any place where the Kirklands or the Shackelfords had lived before. So I also want to talk about what's next for this project. Now that I'm through this this season of the Helenaki deep dive, where I focused on Ruth Shackelford's diary and trying to put it into context. And... It's the last episode of the season, but I very well may revisit the Shackleford's at some point in the future. And so you might, you may in the future get more episodes about the Shackleford's. But for now, I have other spatial stories that I also want to tell. But I do have other work that I plan to do on the Shackleford's and mapping their route and putting context to their journey, basically creating a deep map. For this purpose, I've created a website for the Shackleford mapping research. It's called shackleford.website, which is S-H-A-C-K-E-L-F-O-R-D dot website, W-E-B-S-I-T-E. And this website is very much a work in progress. So far, it has a main page, it has an about page that says it's a work in progress, and it has the very beginnings of a web map. I may add other features. I'll probably add a way to to get access to the 1865 and 1868 maps and a map of those two routes together. Also have thoughts of adding a blog if you want to follow progress made about the mapping. And there'll be a way to sign up for a mailing list so you can get notifications about new updates to the web map or to the blog. So let's talk a little bit about the web map, which I'm making out of Leaflet, which is, it's a bit of a learning experience for me. So if you look at it right now, there's a map that's centered on the United States and it has some location markers, which follow the 1865 route. And you can click on each one and get a little bit of information that's very poorly formatted at this moment, but it's the beginning. So to this map, I'll be adding the actual route with the confidence levels um, for 1865 and 1868, as well as the 1868 point locations that I have. Hopefully format them better, maybe make the barkers look a little prettier. We'll see what I can do. I also plan to make this into more of a deep map, add more information that will broaden understanding of the area. 
So one of the things I'd like to add is the layer that shows indigenous people's territories, which are available from native map. I've used that in the past to determine the indigenous territories that the Shackleford's party was traveling through uh, for a specific episode. But I think it would be a nice layer to have available so you can see who are the peoples, very few of which Ruth Shackleford identified. Mostly she identified the Apache and the Comanche because they were the very frightening ones in the 1868 journey. Other things I can add, uh, I'd like to add, I found an article last summer from the Nebraska Historical Society about Confederate soldiers at forts in the, along the Platte River. And so, and it was taking place around in 1865, so when the Shackelfords would have been traveling through there. And this corresponds with a remark that Sarah Raymond Herndon made in her book, Days on the Road, about Confederate soldiers that had ended up so far from home. So there's a possibility for adding things related to the time when the Shackelfords were traveling in 1865 and 1868. There's also the possibility of adding things from earlier, when earlier groups were using these trails. It's important to understand that by the time the Shackelfords traveled in 1865, their route was really well known. Most of it, there were roads, there were stage, they were basically taking stage routes, there were stage stations, and that was all built up from the very earliest travelers in the 1840s. And so the Shackleford's experience was layered on top of all of the earlier experiences of people who had traveled that path. And so you see that in the various graves that Ruth Shackleford remarked about, especially in 1865, where some of them were more recent, some things didn't necessarily have a date, but they were all part of this built-up landscape from over 15 years of travel on this route and heavy travel along that route. So I have lots of ideas for deep mapping, and it's very much a work in progress. It has the very bare bones right now, but I'll have time to work on my leaflet skills and add more information as I find it because I'm going to keep on working on this. So for the podcast itself, I'm taking a little break and so I can work on the next season of the Helenaki Deep Dive, which will return on January 6, 2022. So the first Thursday of January, the the first episode of season two of the Helenaki Deep Dive will come out. And this upcoming season will explore the Peloponnesus of Greece, and we'll be looking at it around 1700 AD, when the Venetians were in charge of the Peloponnesus, and focusing on the territory of Vastitsa. All right, let's finish up with some end notes. The maps for the 1868 route came from, the first map for California, Arizona came from the David Rumsey map collection, while all of the others I found uh, from the Library of Congress, and the way that I found them was by Googling and then following Library of Congress links. Links to all the maps are in the show notes. And the David Rumsey maps are available online that you can open up in QGIS. Um, the one I used for this episode, I had had a membership for a short time and was able to download it and georeference it myself, which made it much more accurate because I knew that it would actually match up with boundaries. Although accuracy also depends on the cartographer who drew the map. All the maps from the Library of Congress uh, do not have georeferencing. They don't have any information about where they actually are located in the world. And so if you want to do anything similar with maps from the Library of Congress itself, that you will need to georeference them yourself. So it's pretty easy. It's something that would need to be done. The Butterfield Overland Mail Trail is described in Report of the Postmaster General 1859 in the executive documents of the U.S. Senate. So with that... I want to thank all of you for listening to me ramble on sometimes about the Shacklefords. 
I also, I especially want to thank supporters of the Hellenaki Deep Dive on Patreon, whose financial support keeps this podcast going. Please check out shackleford.website and sign up for the mailing list so you can get notifications when there's new content about the Shacklefords. And then I'll see you for season two. Thanks for listening. Email questions or comments to deepdive at helenaki.com or ask them on the Helenaki Deep Dive Facebook page. Show notes with links to resources mentioned in this episode are available at helenaki.com. That's H-E-L-O-N-A-K-I dot com. You can also find ways to support the show, now including merch, such as t-shirts, mugs, and stickers with the Helenaki Deep Dive logo. And you can find those at helenaki.com slash support. My thanks to Patreon supporter at the geospatial analyst level, Leah Varel. Your support keeps the Helenaki Deep Dive going. The Helenaki Deep Dive is written and produced by me, Jen Globius, of the Helenaki. The theme music is Deep Ocean Instrumental by Dan O of danosongs.com. Additional sounds from zapsplat.com. Thanks for listening.